cows will always seek a leader. And when it comes milking time, when they're out to pasture, the lead cow will start toward the barn. And if you stood there and watched, you'd see them funnel in behind the lead cow. And when they walked in the barn, the stanchions were always, the gate was always wide open and there was food there in a trough. And they would walk, and they, unless they were a brand new cow that got lost, they would walk to their stall, stick their head through, and start eating them. And the caretakers would just go bink, 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 and go down the line and lock in the stalls because there was a, the feed was here in a trough, and alongside was a cup that if you push it, put their tongue down on it, it would get water. So they got their drinking water and whatnot. So they all knew where their stalls were, unless they were very new. And then they would go and they'd hunt around for the empty one, because that's where we go, because they used to sell them off and whatnot. But um, along the lines of that too, uh, I'll talk to him later, talk to you about it later, with a, 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 a guild tailor who ran Low and Green Farm out here. Um, he built a very elaborate system for the cows. He had silos where the food was kept, had motor-driven belts that took the food through. The cows would come in and go up on a platform. And <clears throat> according to where they hook up the uh, milkers, and according to how much milk they gave, was how much food would come down the chute. <clears throat> and if you wanted to see something funny, you want to see a cow trying to get that extra little ounce of food by squeezing to get a little bit more milk out and then a little bit more food would come down. And then when it was done eating, they dismiss him and the next cow would come in and they would do hundreds of cows, one right after the other like that. But it, no, cows always have a, a leader and they will go to the barn and it's almost like you can almost set your watch by it. If it's, we'll say usually it's around 3, 3.30, they would go in for milk. And you could watch and they'd be out there laying down, standing up, doing all kinds of things. And as it got closer to that time, the cows would all line up behind the leader and go in. And, and aside from that, on the same story, there used to be a farm that's now part of the game preserve on North Road. Well, that used to be a real wealthy gentleman. Um, guy who owned a lot of apartment houses in New York City was the original farmer. And he uh, used to raise cows and whatnot. And he lived in a house which they tore down, which was right up by the road, a beautiful home and whatnot. And uh, he sold the farm and people by uh, John Atwater, which was of the Atwater Kent family, family and that made radios and whatnot. And he was a millionaire. And he tried his best. He said, I don't like getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning to milk the cows and coming in at 3.30 to milk the cows. And he tried to convey that the cows weren't going to get fed at 6 o'clock in the morning and they weren't going to get fed at 4.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And of course it was a failure and he finally said, I'm not a farmer and gave up. And, you know, but for a period of time, he sure as heck gave it a trial. But on the side for that same farm, um, show you how things get built and whatnot. This fellow that owned it originally, uh, when he remodeled uh, apartment houses, they took the front doors, which were steel doors with little peepholes. And this one day we were, went up to do some work on a farm because it was numerous buildings and whatnot. And we went up there and I said, what is this? And here's this long building that they used to um, keep the tractors and whatnot in. The entire building was consisted of three foot wide front doors bolted together all the way around the building. That was all it was and with a roof on it. And I think it's still there today. I should look, I should go back and drive down in there because they don't, they don't like you to drive down in there, but they, uh, they, you can, I don't know. But uh, th that form was there. But the, the fact that it, the guy tried to change the habits of milk can't be done. Can't be done. But uh, funny about milk, 
Gil Taylor fought with the state of New Jersey for the right to sell milk for a different price than what the state produced it because they grew it. Yeah, grew it. They didn't grow milk. They got the milk from their own and sold it. So they said we shouldn't have to pay um, an extra fee for somebody that isn't involved in that. And he won, finally. They sued him and whatnot, but he finally won. And he had a store uh, in the Centennial Building, which is still the ice cream store on Main Street. And he had another store over in Roxbury that used to be um, right on Route 46 and sold milk and milk products to those different direct. And, and he also had one at the farm over in, um, in uh, Long Valley where you could go and buy your milk and cottage cheese and things like that directly from the barn. But he was way ahead of his time. He was a man who, um, he had, again, plaques on his wall all over the place for the state of New Jersey for growing the most corn per acre and the best corn and the this and the that. And I mean, because he just um, was, he was way ahead in his thinking of how a farm could be ran to be profitable and whatnot. And he did that too, which is a far cry from what you asked me about milk. But, but, but um, Did you get, as a child, did you get milk delivery from their farm? Early, yes. It used to be, um, <clears throat> in fact, um, uh, Joan Barkman used to be our milk man, lady. That the, she used to work for a farm out on off of South Road, who um, used to make milk and deliver it to individual homes and whatnot. So you used to leave your there was a box on the back of your house, and you put your empty milk cans and the bottles in there, and she put the new ones in, and away she'd go and whatnot. But uh, she was the milk lady for years before she became a bus driver for the school, which I guess she's still part of. But the administrator for the busing, well, not today, you know, but, but uh, and it's funny because that man that owned that farm was a, a pilot, a private, and to the state ever found him. He went and he was flying up toward New England somewhere, got lost. This was before radar and everything were even available, and the plan disappeared, and they've never found him, never to this day, and that's been probably 60 years ago, 50 years ago anyhow, and never, but it's never been found.